a book lesson. There's more there. Okay, I apologize for having to do that, but hopefully I'll be able to write this time without that crazy. Okay, so a bit is one spot where you can put a zero or a one, okay? Zero is off, one is on. If you ever look at the back of a PC and you see a switch with a zero and a one, a lot of times they have rocker switches that have a zero. Oh. Who's working so well? It is the thing, okay? That has a rocker switch with a zero and a one. Zero is off and one is on, okay? That's not an O, that's a zero because it's binary on and off. But if it helps you remember better that O is for off, I know on starts with an O too, okay? Then that's the bits off, that's the bits on, okay? So a byte is eight of those. Okay, a byte is eight spots for memory to be held, okay? And when we talk about how much memory we have, and we talked about this the other day, when we were talking about metrics, we're talking about how much memory, we're talking about how much bytes, and so when we talk to metrics, by the way, a big B is a byte, and a little b is a bit, okay? Big B means byte, little b means bit, so there are eight bits in a byte. So what's a thousand bytes? It's the symbol for a thousand. Everyone except for Mr. Clark should know this because we talked about it last time, two times ago. A thousand is a what? What? Kilo, kilo, right? So a kilobyte equals 1,000 bytes. Okay, what's a million? Megabyte, right? So a megabyte equals 1 million. It's the pen, because this one's working fine. Bytes, so that bar is fine. This pen has something intermittent. Okay. What's the next denomination up? A gigabyte. Okay. A gigabyte is how many? One billion, right? Okay, so one billion bytes. Okay. Your Laptops that you guys have right now all have two gigabytes of memory in them. Okay, and really, gigas is where we stop when we're talking about memory. Okay, does anybody remember what the next one is? Terabyte. Yeah, a terabyte, or a, I'm not even going to try to write the zeros. That's a trillion. Okay, we don't deal with terabytes of RAM anyway. We do it. We do with hard drive space, but. So, one of the things we need to be able to remember is no matter what, no matter what the, the um, unit of measure that we're talking about is, we have to know what a kilo, a mega, a giga, and a tera is. Because that come up, comes up with hertz, comes up with bytes, okay? You should understand the basic metrics, and I guarantee you, 100%. You will see matching question looks amazingly like this table right here on the test on Friday. Okay, so just to get back to where we were, that's where bytes come from. So when we're talking about zeros and ones, we're not talking about, you know, a stream like this. We're talking about billions of zeros and ones being transferred through the network, back and forth between the monitor or the printer. It's not like they're just in zero and one side and over there. So it's oversimplification, simplification, but all of it happen, happens in binary code. Back and forth, the CPU only ha handles a binary. So that was one of the things that we did not go over the other day. That okay, PC hardware components, they're used for both input and output. We know what those primary devices are. Input are? Give me, give me an example. 
What are the two primary input devices? Uh, keyboard and mouse. And the two primary output devices? What? Yeah, okay. Okay, so we've got those hardware various devices used for input, input and output. We've got those things in cut inside the case, and the first thing inside the case is the motherboard. What connects to the motherboard? Everything, Everything right? We said that on day two. If it's not connected to the motherboard, it's not part of the PC. If it's not connected to the motherboard, it's not part of the PC. It's not connected to the motherboard, it's not part of the PC. Okay? Now, the motherboard has a primary purpose besides connecting everything. It connects it all to the CPU and it houses that CPU, which is where the processing takes place. Not everything's connected to the CPU. CPU is connected to the motherboard, which is connected to everything, right? So inside our PC, the primary things, we've got our motherboard, which connects everything. We've got our CPU and the chipset, which we haven't really talked about. We'll talk about a little bit today. It's really chapter four, but we'll talk about the basics of it. We have our storage devices. Uh, and then we've kind of got the other stuff that might or may not be connected uh, inside our PC. Of those other devices, we have uh, expansion cards that can hook up to our, our motherboard. We have some kind of electrical system, and, and that's the subject of Chapter 3. We, we've talked a little bit about, about the power supply. We'll talk a little bit more today. Just like everything has to be connected to the motherboard, everything has to get power from somewhere. Uh, and so we have an internal electrical system that changes this wall outlet voltage from AC to DC and lowers the voltage so we don't blow up things inside our computer. We have instructions stored on the motherboard. It's the first set of instructions that starts up when we turn on our computer. The BIOS, right? So that's software. We have those instructions on the motherboard. That's software that starts up. And the, that software runs another piece of software Another test, what's the test that it runs? The post, the power on self test. Okay. And through that BIOS, we provide configuration settings, which we did the other day, uh, through, through BIOS. Okay. This is really weird the way this is presented. That's why I don't use this first. Hardware input and output storage devices all require the following things. A method for the CPU to communicate with the device, which is usually through the motherboard, and it's usually through the uh, motherboard chipset that controls that flow of information. It needs software to instruct to and control the device. Chapter two, we're gonna play with this a lot, a lot, but the software that controls hardware are called, do we talk about this? What, what's the software that controls hardware? I don't know if I said that. So it's called a driver. Okay, that's what drivers are. So if you have a piece of hardware that doesn't work, it may be software that's making it not work. If we put in a brand new video card, that's a high-end video card, brand new, just came out from from uh, Nvidia. It's the newest, nicest, cost me a thousand dollar video card. It's probably not going to work because it needs the right drivers to work correctly. Because the drivers, drivers are small programs that instruct the computer how to use hardware. Yeah. Did, it, did papers update? You gotta go get out. You have to go out and then we're gonna do that next next chapter. We're gonna show you how to go out and find device drivers and how to add device drivers. Oh, okay. Some of them update automatically if your computer is set up to update drivers, and if Microsoft knows about them. That doesn't mean they do. For instance, if I wanted, here we are. We're getting off task, but if, if uh, I wanted to look at the device drivers on my computer, I don't know why that never works for me. I'm gonna go to control panel, and one of the, oh, that's, I did not hit control panel. Let's see if I can hit it again this time. Control panel, I don't know, I wasn't even close. One of the things that we can look at is the device manager on our control panel. And basically what this does is it, let it lets us see everything that's on our computer. And I, I'm going to go up to display adapters. So I've got a NVIDIA GeForce GTX 550 Ti video card in this computer. Okay, And if I double click on it, I can go and see what driver version I have currently installed. 
Okay. So my driver was provided by NVIDIA. That means Microsoft can update it. Okay. If it was a Microsoft device driver, then Microsoft could update it with automatic updates. But it's not, so it can't. Okay. Uh, I, it, uh, this driver came out in May 19th of 2016. Probably under, probably not the current driver. And it says it was signed by Microsoft Windows as compa compatible. Basically, it doesn't have to say that. It means that NVIDIA submitted it to Microsoft. Microsoft said, yes, it works with us. That's all that basically says. But so I can get that. And I can click update driver to try it. I'm not going to do it because it will take forever and it won't work right. Because when you say update driver, you're updating from Microsoft. And the good video card is one place you never update from Microsoft go to the manufacturer's website and learn how to do that next chapter. But all these are, this lets me see the program that's running that piece of hardware. And in every case, in every piece of hardware that's inside this PC that it finds, uh, there is some device driver making it work. The one for the hard drive is just a Microsoft device driver. It came out in 2006 because it's a hard drive and it just writes to a hard drive and there's nothing new since that driver came out. If I click update driver on this one, if there is a new one that's come out and it says search automatically for updated software, I can have it go out to Windows and say is there a more current driver available for this piece of hardware and it says no. You've, it's according to Microsoft from their database, the one that's on there is current. That 2006 driver is current enough. But I can go and look at every single driver. And, and incidentally, if something isn't working right, I will see either a red asterisk over it, there's like a red circle with an exclamation point on it, saying there is no driver for this device. And, it, and that means that device doesn't work. And there's probably at least one on your laptop that's that way, because we never set up, if you do Windows pause break, you can go to the device drivers, straight to the device manager, or say you don't have authority to change things, and that's fine. If you're a standard user, you can't make changes. If I go down here, I think there's one. Maybe there isn't. Maybe we found all the drivers. Well, yep, there isn't any. But there used to be one driver, I think for a modem or something, that, that didn't load and we didn't care about it. Um, but anyway, so that's, that's device driver. So there are small programs, we're going to play with those in chapter two, that make our hardware work. Because the hardware has to have software to make it work. And obviously we need electricity. That electricity is provided by our power supply that's inside our PC or inside our laptop uh, or our battery. We have to have power to make all those things work too. Okay. Hardware used for input and output, we already said this, most popular input devices, keyboard and mouse. Have, have you noticed the trend here that, that this is an important question? How important is that? I think it's fairly obvious, but so those are input and output devices. We've already said that probably five times today. Then on day one, when we talked about hooking up a PC, I really spent a lot of time talking about all the ports that are in the back of the PC then. Okay, so there, there are some basic things that we need to make sure that we can identify on the back of a PC because this will be a question on te test. Okay, first of all, where do we plug in the power? We should know, hopefully, just because we know that that's where we plug in a power cord. Okay, the power cord for a PC is called a D cord. It's a standard cord for PCs. Oh my gosh, I can't believe he threw it in there. Levi is in so much trouble. I told Levi the other day to get rid of this PC that he brought up to my room, so he threw it in the cupboard so I wouldn't see it there. <sighs> More than we'll pay for that. Okay, so anyway, it's called a D plug because it's shaped like a D. If you haven't heard that before. Okay, so it's a standard plug. It has uh, both our, our, and we'll talk more about this in electricity, but it has a spot for ground and a spot for our hot and our, and our neutral wire, and those plug right into there in the back of the cord. And this is a standard cord. They can go bad, okay? We've had PCs not power on because this cord has gone bad. We had that happen, actually, 
and laptops all the time. I bought a whole box because we got a bunch of power supplies that were missing them. I bought a whole box of, of this cord right here, which is not a stand key plug. It stills funny little, it goes in the back of a power supply, but it's still kind of a D-plug, right? So I bought, I don't know, 100 of these on eBay for like 99 cents a piece. A whole bunch of them gone bad. It's just a dang wire. How do you make, the, how does the wire go bad? I don't know. It's poor, poor manufacturing, but they can go bad. So we need to know where the power plug's in. We need to know, where'd I put my pen? That's the bad pen, so this must be the good pen. Okay. So we need to know that that's what the power switch looks like. And it's that rocker that has a zero and a one on it. And I, you know, there's going to be a question that says, is this PC on or off? And I'm asking you to look at the switch and tell me whether it's on or off. And you should be able to identify this picture is not as close, but it's on the one right now. So it's on. Okay. No, it's not. It's not plugged in. Can't you tell there's no power? No, I'm just kidding. Okay, so that would be the question. And I actually had a student get all mad. It's not, it's not plugged in, Mr. Poole. I was like, you know that's not what I was asking. Anyway, okay. So we need to know that as well. Um, and then we need to know from our matching that we did the other day, we need to know that these, what are those called? Motherboard. Okay, they're, on, they're directly on the motherboard. What's the word I used? Uh, Starts with an I. Integrated, integrated components, okay, those are the integrated. Okay, those are the things that are integrated right on the motherboard. They, all those plugs or devices associated with those plugs are part of what we got with the motherboard. So all these are the integrated components. So integrated on this particular motherboard is sound, network, video, PS2 mouse and keyboard and USB. Those are all integrated on this. So I know I have those when I build this computer no matter what. Okay, so those are the integrated components and I should be able to pick out what those things are. I think I have a better picture next, but I guarantee you there'll be a picture of those two ports and it's gonna say which one do I plug the keyboard into and the answer is the purple, purple one, okay? Purple's keyboard, green is mouse, and that plug right there, the round one is called a PS2 port, okay? It's circular, it has six holes and a little notch out spot so that hopefully you can't put it in wrong. All those students don't put them in straight, they go like this and they bend all the pins, which is why we have slowly gotten rid of every PS2 keyboard and mouse. There's nothing wrong with PS2 keyboards and mouse. Perfectly fine. Uh, there's no difference between that and USB, except for the fact that if you have a USB keyboard, you can have, like mine does, you can have USB key ports on the keyboard for my wireless mouse. You can't have a USB port on a PS2 keyboard. They know they're totally different. Set down my pen again. There it is. So the other things we should be able to identify easily is the USB ports on the back of a PC. You should be able to know what's the, what's the mouse, what's the keyboard, what USB is, and I should easily be able to identify these are the ones that are most important to me. Video, okay, what color is the video port on a standard video port? What color is it? Blue. Okay. It's blue or white. Okay. It's blue if it's what? What? It's what? Blue's digital. Go the other way. The opposite of digital is? Analog, okay. Okay, so I've got two types of, types of video. I've got digital and I've got analog. The blue one is analog. And 90% of all motherboards here at National Trail have a blue port on the back. Maybe I should say 99. 
there are some that don't. But most of them have a blue analog port, okay? And that's what this one is, right there, okay? The white port is digital. This is a, a DVI, or a digital video interface port right there, is the white one. Digital is better. Given the choice between blue and white, I'm going to choose white all the time. I'm going to get a slightly clearer picture. If I have one of the newest monitors out there, I'm going to get a much clearer picture. I, have, I got a 4K display at home and I'm hooking it up to analog, I'm an idiot. Okay? Because you just wasted a couple hundred bucks on a 4K display. You don't know what 4K displays is really, really good. Okay? It's like saying that he's got the newest, uh, what's the iOS display? The newest. Um, Retina? Yeah, Retina display, and then he's playing an old. Uh, YouTube through it that only does 320 and it's all fuzzy because that's all you can do. So blue is analog, white is digital, the other digital is HDMI. HDMI. And of the things at National Trail, those are the ones that we have. There are other analogs one analog ones. There's HDMI right there. I thought I had yeah. Okay, so on this card right here, this round one right here is called an S video. S video is analog, okay? Um, and it used to be that all TVs, or all good TVs, had an S video ports in them because analog used to be good. Now all good TVs have HDMI ports on them. Right? You, know, you can't find a TV with an S video anymore. So that's old, but analog still exists, and it still exists for things like this, things like we do because we want to be able to push two, two video devices at the same time. I want to be able to clone my screen with my projection. So one thing is hooked up to analog, my monitor over there, and one thing is hooked up to digital, my projector right here. Okay. The better the video card, the more outputs, and we'll talk about that with video, but you could have multiple, multiple HDMIs on a real good video card. Okay. So I need to be able to identify the, the video outputs. If I've got video here and I've got video there, which video should I plug into? Okay, the one on the bottom. Why should I plug into this one, Ian, over that one? Because the video card. Because you said so. Why? Because. Uh, Anybody play Euchre? Okay. Expansion trumps. Integrated. Okay. So you could, you know, what Trump means. But expansion cards, which I also should be able to identify, that all these things that run at a 90 degree angle to the motherboard are expansion cards. Here's my motherboard, and here's any expansion card I can't throw anymore on there. Here's any expansion cards that I put in there. So those are my integrated and 90 degrees off of that are all my expansion cards because I've got expansion slots on my motherboard that I can add new or still connect it, new or better devices to. And this has four different expansion card slots on it. And the expansion card trumps integrated. The motherboard always says, well, I'm starting up, I'm going through BIOS, I'm looking at my devices. Why would you add this if you didn't want to use it? So I'm going to turn this off. And just use that. I'm going to say 80% of BIOSes automatically, I'm not going to say all, because that would be a lot. But most BIOSes automatically just turn off the integrated one if it finds an expansion one when it comes to video. Okay, so when you're hooking up a PC, you always look for this first. We just did this yesterday with one of my advanced tech students, and we set up a new projector, and I said, Is there an uh, an extra video card. And he said, no. So I sent him upstairs, we got a new video card, come back downstairs, unplug and pull out the PC, and there's an extra video card. We just wasted 10 minutes. You couldn't tell there was a card that we couldn't see it, Mr. Bull. Okay, so you need to be able to identify what those expansion cards are. Okay, or at least be able to see, hey, it's got, because I'm going to have a picture of a PC like this and say, how many expansion cards are there? How many are there? Five or 
Well, which one's the answer? Uh, five. Five. One, two, three, four. Where in the heck do you get five from? I was looking at the arrows. What? I was looking at the arrows. Don't look at the arrows. Look at the cards. Okay. So you are going to get asked a question. I actually, let me control that. It'll be faster. You're going to get asked a question like that. How many expansion cards are there? You're not at the point where you can identify what all those are, but you certainly can count to four or five if you stutter, I guess. Okay? I expect you to look. That's one. That's just a blank piece of metal. That's one. That's one. That's one. So there's seven slots. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven slots for expansion cards on this PC, but there's only four actual cards in there. Okay? Network ports are one thing that if there's an expansion card, they all work. I have computers that have up to four network cards in them. I got the integrated one, and I have three more down here. My PC and the PC behind me both have two. That doesn't turn off the other one because it says you may want more than one, so they all work. It's not like video. Okay? So I'm at basically expanding my ability, my computer's ability because I want one card on one network, there isn't one up here, but we'll pretend this is one, and one card on another network, so you can have multiple network cards, okay? Then I, I've got a sound card down here on this one. Most motherboards anymore have integrated sound, and I've got three ports on this integrated sound. What does the green one go to? Redeem yourself. This is, this is real heavy, just so you know you're going to get a metal imprint on your forehead. What's the green one go to? Headphones. Anyone? Microphone. Eh. Ah. Uh, speaker. No, it's speakers up. There's only, there's only a couple things left, okay? One of the test things, you're going to be asked this. Green is for speakers. Why does it matter, Mr. Poole? Because when you go and hook up a PC, if you hook it up wrong, they're going to put it in a work order, and I have to go back down there and go, ah! It's not plugged in the right book. Because they'll say, my speakers are broken. And then I'll go down and the speaker's either not on or it's not plugged in the right one. So I have to know that. Okay? Okay, so green. Alright, sound up here. Equals speakers. Where are headphones plugged into? None of them! They're plugged in the front, right? Who goes to the back and plugs in headphones? That's why they all have these plugs in the front. You plug your headphones in where it has a little headphone picture. None of those are for headphones. Okay? None of them. That's like you have a little jack on the side of your laptop for headphones. So none of them. Don't answer that question that way. What's the other color? We've got pink. What's pink for? equals the microphone. And that's an analog microphone. Okay? That's an analog microphone. I don't have one sitting over here. There's some over in the other closet. <sighs> analog microphones still work just fine. They're not as good as a digital one, a USB microphone by any stretch of the imagination. But they work just fine. They're very inexpensive. If you're trying to Skype with somebody, they work just fine. Okay. If you're trying to record a class, they do not because they are an unpowered device. Yes, they get power through the motherboard from that plug. There's a little tiny itsy bitsy bit of, of electricity. But they're totally different than a, a USB one that has USB power going to it and, and can pick up the sound. Okay. So the last one, the last plug is blue. This should be in your notes. We've talked about it before. We'll play hangman. Two words. Anybody want to guess a letter or go straight to the word? Ian, give me a letter. We got a head. A. What? A. A. I. I. Oh, okay. E. Uh, 
Who hasn't gone yet? Cody? <laughs> Give me a letter. Well, we've got, by the way, we've guessed H. Up. L. We, what else do we guess? We oh, guess it's line in. Line in! Oh, there we go. It's the line in. Okay. Line in is an audio input, unlike the microphone, that's made to be put, hooked up to other audio components. So that's what you'd hook up your stereo system to. If you wanted your stereo system to go to your, to your PC, that's what you would hook up your iPhone into if you wanted to have your sound coming from your iPhone into your PC and record it digitally or something. I don't know why you do that since it's already digital, but blue is line in. So we should know this. Green is speakers, pink is microphone, and blue is line in. Okay. So the last one down here we don't care about. It's a modem, and if you're using a modem at home, I feel sorry for you. I don't know how many people use a modem anymore to connect up to the, a network. Already went over this. PS2 is a six pin connector for a keyboard or a mouse. That's the only two things that use PS2. And obviously, we've gone over this twice. Green is mouse. mouse. Purple is keyboard. Sometimes it's a different color. HP has to do their own thing, just like BIOS. They use F10. They use orange for some reason. Nobody else does it. Only HP ever did it. I think they've stopped doing it because they didn't like to be standardized. Okay, so our other output device we've got monitors and printers and we've got either video inputs that either are digital analog or we have USB. Okay. We really don't have other ways to connect to printers other than Ethernet if it's a network printer. We don't use the old network cables anymore. So I, that's why it's a different picture because I took that out. Okay, so inside the computer We've got a bunch of different hardware inside the computer. We've got the motherboard holding the CPU, memory, and every other components connected to it. We have storage on flash drives, hard drives, and CD-ROM. We have a power supply that connects up to the motherboard and any component that requires a lot of power. Okay? So the motherboard has a big, huge plug on it for power. And this is kind of the subject of chapter three, but the motherboard has a big, huge plug on it. Let's see if I can play it down without dropping it on my head. There we go. Okay, so the mode board has a really big plug. And things that don't require a lot of power just get their power through the motherboard, like USB devices. They don't have a separate plug-in. But some things have their own plugs, like hard drives and CD-ROMs, because they have motors that cause things to spin. Okay, so everything either gets its power through the motherboard from the power supply, or directly, because it's plugged in directly, because it's using a lot of power. But in all cases, the power supply uh, supplies that power. There's only one big circuit board that used to communicate between all devices, and that's the motherboard. But there are cables connected to the motherboard that connect those things too, like USB cables or hard drive cables. But they all go through the motherboard itself when we look inside a PC. Okay. So I'm, I'm, as I'm looking inside a PC, and all these parts are subject of separate chapters, right? So we've got our power supply, we've got a motherboard, underneath that fan is a CPU, there's our hard drive connected with both a data cable to the motherboard and a power car cable to the power supply, okay? But of those things, I said there's only four sections we need to be able to identify, and, and that's on the motherboard, we're gonna come to a separate motherboard. I have a picture. I'm not gonna ask you to identify everything in this picture, you do not have that as a question in the test, okay? But we have all the different parts we're talking about inside the case. It's another picture of another case. Transition to our mother. Okay, the things I did say you have to be able to identify are the four sections of integrated components, CPU or processor, memory, and expansion components. So those four things you have to be able to identify, those four sections in the motherboard. And as we go on to the motherboard section, you will get to the point where you can identify what's the south bridge, what's the north bridge. There, there's the north bridge. Um, and you'll have to identify all those things on the motherboard by the time we're done with chapter four. But right now, we just need to know the basics. I've got my integrated processor, memory, and expansion items on the motherboard, okay? I already said this, largest and most important circuit board, everything connects to the motherboard. 
It houses the CPU where most, does not say all, most processing take places and all devices are connected through or to the motherboard in some way. Uh, the motherboard not only holds the CPU, but it also has what's called a chipset, which I don't think we talked about. The chipset is what controls the flow of information around the motherboard. And there's two different chipsets. There's what's called the North Bridge and the South Bridge. And we're going to talk about this more when, we, when it comes to motherboards. But these, these chipsets, the one's underneath this heat sink right here, because it gets really hot, and the other one's right there. This one controls the flow of information from the CPU to the memory to the video card. All of those things go through this one. So all the information, because the memory wants to talk right to the CPU, right? So it's by itself. And video, because it's so important that it's fast, also talks right through this chipset. This chipset controls the flow of every other bit of information to the CPU. It's got lower priority. Your keystrokes on the keyboard go through them. How slow are your keystrokes compared to the 1,000, let's see, it's one gigabyte, so one billion cycles of information that comes from the memory? You're pretty darn slow, so you don't have to go that fast. If you can do one billion keystrokes a second, you're pretty darn fast. Type. Okay, so, so that's what the chipset does. It controls that flow of information. We've got storage, which is memory. Okay, primary storage for the CPU is memory. Primary storage for the CPU is memory. Primary storage for the CPU is memory. There are two kinds of memory. There's our system RAM, and the one we haven't talked about that we're gonna talk about a lot, chapter four, is cache memory. Cache memory is still memory, but it's memory that's already on the CPU. It comes with the CPU. We're gonna talk a lot more about that in chapter four. So primary storage, when we're talking about primary to the CPU, is memory. Either system RAM or cache RAM, they're both memory. Okay? We have communication that come, comes around the bottom of the, our motherboard. All these wires all terminate at the CPU. Because really the purpose of the motherboard is to get information to and from the CPU. All of these circuits come to here. Okay? And on the motherboard also is the system clock that we talked about a little bit when we were talking about how the startup happens. The system clock starts running right away and it synchronizes the flow of information. And what I mean by that, which I didn't talk about the other day, is you can't have, there's no passing lanes. Okay? Think of it as I 70 has one lane one way and one lane the other way. No passing lanes. Okay? So everybody has to go at the same speed. All the information has to go at the same speed. If it did not, we would have what? Traffic. What? Traffic. Wreck. Uh, yes. We would have what? Wreck. A wreck. Okay. Or it's called a a collision, and it's called a collision in computer terms too. It's a collision of data. The data has to move at the same speed around the motherboard. It has to be synchronized. And that's what the system clock does. It says, we're all going to this speed. Everybody's going at this speed. Nobody goes faster than this speed. And they all go, huh, huh, around the motherboard together. And there's no traffic because we're all going at the exact same speed around the motherboard, realizing this speed is more like one billion times a second. But they're all going at exactly the same speed, synchronized by the system clock. OK, all that happens on that circuit board. And if you remember from your how does the startup sequence happen, that's one of the things that initializes right away. The system clock initializes and starts doing its thing to synchronize the flow of data. Okay, and we talked about we've got a power supply in there, and we've got data on our the BIOS program, and then we've got our configuration data saved in, in uh, CMOS. I'm not sure why I put this picture in here. Maybe it's so that you could see our integrated stuff. This is a different CPU slot, but it's still the CPU slot. Here's our memory, and here's our expansion slots on here. Okay. 
Uh, again, we already talked about the back panel components. This is one that it does not exist anymore. And really, this one doesn't exist anymore. And this one is marginally existing anymore. Depends on the computer. The rest of them exist. Still today, we already went through all the ports. OK. CPU performs most of the processing. The chipset controls the flow of information to the motherboard. And I just said there's two chipsets. One controls the information coming from the video and the memory. The other one controls everything else. But all you really need to know in this set chapter is that the chipset controls the flow of data to the motherboard. Okay, That's all we need to know in chapter one, that the chipset controls the flow of information to the motherboard. How much it does from what thing is really the subject of chapter four. OK, that's just another picture showing. Uh, and here's the north and the south bridge that I just talked about. The north bridge is going to, is of the two chips, the north bridge always has the bigger heat sink because it gets hotter. And the south bridge always has the smaller one. In the case of that one and that one, there isn't a heat sink on the south bridge because the data doesn't flow that fast. In the case of, I don't know if I have a good enough one here. But in the case of most modern, especially gamer motherboards, there's a heat sink over both. It's just the heat sink uh, is much smaller on the south chipset. Okay, we have two kinds of storage. We have temporary and permanent. Okay, and this is where students get confused on this term. Okay, so I'm going to go over it one more time. CPU CPU uses temporary storage or memory to hold data instructions while it doesn't, okay? That's its primary, okay? So the temporary storage, which is memory, is its primary storage, okay? When state data instructions are not being used, they're put in permanent storage, okay? Or secondary, which is the hard drive, okay? That's when it's really not using it. It sets it aside there. And if the CPU doesn't even do it. There's a hard drive control that moves the information over there. Okay? So primary is memory and it's temporary. Secondary is hard drives or any other permanent storage. Uh, and it's secondary to what the CPU writes to. This is a little picture. The primary stuff is right here, available immediately to the to the processor, I didn't make this picture obviously, and secondary is that stuff that is set aside but I can access it when I need to. Okay? I, I, I never like that picture that much. So, primary storage provided by device, devices called memory or random access memory. It's a system memory. Information stored here is lost when the computer is turned off. That's why it's temporary. When I reboot the computer, it's gone. Which is why we reboot the computer. My Mimeo board wasn't working. Was it connected? Did I move anything else? No. By rebooting the computer, I reinitialized everything, I cleared out the memory, and all of a sudden it's working like a charm. Okay? 75% of the time, when people have problems with their computer, a reboot solves the problem. It includes when they get virus pop-ups and stuff because it's in memory. They don't actually have a virus, it's just trying to get them to do something. Okay, so it's another picture of what RAM looks like, our primary storage. There's all kinds of different kinds of RAM out there, and we will learn about that as the subject of Chapter 5, which is all about RAM and all the different kinds of RAMs that are out there. Our motherboard form factor determines what kind of RAM we can put in. You can't choose any kind. You can only use one for a specific motherboard. Okay, But there's more than one, and uh, you need to be able to identify the different kinds of RAM. This is just saying if you don't know how much RAM is in your computer, you can hit the Windows pause break button and bring up the system properties, and it'll say how much RAM. This is how old this picture is. There's only 256 meg of RAM in that computer. That's, that's pretty old. So if I do the same thing, showing my lack of knowledge on Windows 10 right now on how to get where I want to go. There we go. The system looks totally different now than it used to on a Windows XP, but mine has 24 gig of RAM in mine. Why? Because that's what it took. If I would have taken more, I would have put it in more. 
I did. I mean, it's a government PC, and it was not like I bought the memory. We pulled it out of the computers and threw it away. But you can see how much RAM is in your computer pretty easily. Secondary storage is anywhere you can permanently hold information, hard drives, flash drives, CD-ROMs, floppy drives if you had one. Uh, but that's where it's permanently stored, but it's secondary storage because it's secondary to the CPU. It doesn't like it. It's slow. Okay, so again, that'll be a matching question on the test that you understand that. That secondary storage cannot be processed by the CPU until it's copied into primary. That's why it's secondary. It has to copy the stuff from your hard drive to your memory before the CPU can talk to it. Which is why more memory makes your computer run faster. And why less memory makes your computer run slower. If you have too little memory, then the CPU or the motherboard has to continually copy stuff from the hard drive to the memory, the hard drive to the memory, the hard drive to the memory, because there's not enough memory to just hold it there while it's doing stuff. Your laptops are able to do it with a relatively low amount of memory because the kind of hard drive that we have in there is almost as fast as the memory. So we have solid state drive, drives in there, so they're very, very fast. So it is going back and forth, but it's going back and forth at an increased rate. But anyway, it can't be processed by the CPU until it's taken to primary storage. Different kinds of secondary storage, we already talked about that. Secondary storage is always connected to some kind of a data cable, and we learn about that when we talk about the hard drive chapter. Okay? But there's always some kind of cable that connects up the hard drive. It's just not sitting in there. It has to be connected to the motherboard with some kind of an interface cable. These are different pictures of different interface cables. This is the kind that all of our computers use today. It's called a SATA cable. Again, we'll learn more about that later, but that cable only connects one spot on the motherboard to one hard drive, but it's far faster than the old data cables that we used to have just four or five years ago. And that's a picture of what they look like. This is the old one. Just to give you a relative number, this one went at a speed of 100 megabytes and this one goes as fast as 600, okay? So it, the new cable is six times faster than the old cable, which is why we use those kind of drives. Drives don't really work faster. They communicate faster across that new cable. And hard drives all require power because they have spinny drives in them that make them turn, right? So they all have to have power, not just a data cable. Okay, motherboard components used to communicate all things trace around both power and information around the bus, okay, and this is a new term, the data path size, which relates directly to what you just said, is this the width of the bus. So data moves around in chunks, okay, and the size of that chunk is the width of the bus, and they used to be 16. Yours are 32, mine 64. And if the program is written for a different width or data path size, it may not work on the new thing. Okay? Or it will not work on the same thing. And I already said the system clock does the timing of how those data packets of information go around the computer. And they all terminate the CPU. I already said that. And they're all run by a system clock. They don't actually look like this anymore, but that's what an old system clock used to look like. It used to be a diode. Now it's just integrated right in the motherboard. Expansion slots. We're going to talk more about the different kind of expansion slots that are available on a motherboard, but there's basically uh, uh, six different kinds of expansion slots that could be on any given motherboard, and you could have a multitude of any one. Okay? These look these are all the same. This is a new video card one. This is a different size of that one. And you could use specific cards for specific kinds of slots. And it depends on the kind of motherboard you buy, how many slots you get. Okay? That's part of the form factor of the motherboard. Those interface or expansion cards, I use the word expansion, are mounted in those expansion slots on the motherboard, allowing the CPU to connect directly to it and they add or expand the capability of your computer, okay? Um, 
the rest of that information, I don't know how important you I don't ask you what the port configuration, how to identify it. It's all automatic, it's plug and play when you plug those things in. The only thing you need when you put in an expansion card to make it work is the correct drivers for that device or it's not going to work. And we already said that these are those expansion card slots and you should be able to say if I say how many expansion cards are on this VC you should be able to readily identify in the case of this one that they're one, two, three, four. Don't follow the arrows because it could be pointing to multiple things like inputs and outputs and that's just showing different expansion card slots on a computer. This is the subject of chapter three. The electrical system converts power from wall, okay, wall outlet from um, 110 volt AC down to, I don't know why that says 20 right there, I don't know, why that's a typo, 110 volt AC power from the wall outlet down to DC power, which I'm going to teach you what AC and DC is, but it takes all the way from 110 down to the voltages of 3.35 and 12, okay? and we'll learn which plug does what as part of chapter three. This is a test question. It's one of those things that Microsoft wants you to know, okay? That the power supply has a fan on it. It's not the only fan. A good PC has other cooling fans as well, but the reason that fan is there is to keep it below 185 degrees inside your computer. Electrical components fail at temperatures of 885 degrees or above. Electrical components fail at temperatures of 185 degrees or above. Electrical components fail in terms of 185 degrees or above. Is that in your notes? That's good. It should be in there. Okay. Guaranteed. Stop. 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 That's a test test question. Okay. And that's one of the ones that shows up on every single Microsoft certification exam. It's very important. And it is because when I go and do a diagnostic on a system, I can meet and see if any of them are above 185. One of the things that I have running. Uh, let's see if I can remove it. On our network, it tells me is Anderson on my computer. Yes, 185C. Who asked that question? Yes, it's 185C. Did you just ask that? Like in Celsius? What? Like what's the other computer? Yes, it's 185C. That's hot. Yeah. That's hot. Or is it C? No, it's Fahrenheit. Yeah. I just said it backwards. It's, it's Fahrenheit. That would be too hot. That would be things would be melting at 185 C, wouldn't they? Yeah. I, yeah. No, it's Celsius. C through six. No, I'm gonna do one through four just to make it scan a different range because we used to have one computer that always had a problem. We'll see if it comes up. Now. One of the things this scan does for me, let's see if I can find the column that we can't, nope, not out there far enough, it is the system temperature. We'll let that run and we'll come back to it. Yeah, Fahrenheit, 185 degrees Fahrenheit. What is that C? I don't know. But it's probably 90 something. Is that what it is? 85? Yeah. Because my graphics are for some reason. Oh, does it? It's not running that hot of hope. Oh, okay. We're, so we're going to come back to that and see what the temperature the system's running at. Let's picture what the power supply looks like. The cables that come with power supplies will be able to, chapter three, be able to identify what all those cables go to and what all of them are for. You don't need to know that. You just need to know that there's a fan that blows air out to keep it below 185 degrees. It always blows air out to keep it below 185 degrees. This generates a lot of heat. That and the CPU generate the most amount of heat in the PC, which is why the CPU has a fan on its own. And it has a power plug. We'll learn about this power plugs later. Did talked about this a lot last class. BIOS exists on a ROM chip. Okay, BIOS exists on a ROM chip. BIOS is the program, the basic input put output system. We interact with BIOS to save the information where? What? We interact with this to change the configuration and save it where? Uh, 
Come on, anybody. Rom. What? Nope. Rom's read only. We save it to yeah. RAM. What RAM do we save it to? CMOS RAM. We save it to CMOS RAM. Okay. CMOS RAM is where the config is stored. We talked about this back on day one. The ROM chip holds the BIOS. We play with that program and change things, and it's saved in CMOS RAM. RAM goes away when power is removed. So what keeps the RAM information there? A battery, right? Our little battery, and it's missing on this motherboard. There's a battery right there. If that battery is gone, the information is lost every time the computer is unplugged. Okay, this is obviously not the motherboard. But that battery is what holds the information, like what day is it, what time is it, what is my boot order in CMOS RAM. Okay? Guaranteed to be a test question. And that's a picture of an award ROM BIOS chip. Not really testable. Okay? And we talked about this as we were going through the BIOS stuff the last two classes. Okay? The CMOS configuration chip or CMOS RAM chip is where that amount of memory is that holds the configuration and setup data that we change. Whether we want it to boot from the hard drive, the boot for the network card, it remembers all these things because it's got that battery. Without the battery, as soon as we unplug it, it goes away. Did I start recording when I started this again? I hope I did. I think I did. Yes, I did. Okay, we're almost done. And then we're gonna go to the we're gonna retake the quiz or the, the feedback and then we're gonna go through stuff. So. Okay, so summary, computer requires hardware and software to work. We've got input, output, processing, and storage of data going on inside of our PC. And I should be able to identify just from those words right there. Where does processing take place? CPU, where is store data stored? Hard drive. Or other places, but really they so that is hard drive. What how do we put data in? How do we get data out? Modern printer. Okay. What motherboard is the most important component? It determines everything else. And it's the thing that most people know the least about about their computer. Most people know about their CPU, maybe. They know very little about the motherboard. Okay. All the other com things on the computer may or may not be required for uh, the thing to work. Some of them are optional, some of them are required. We went through that list on day one of optional versus required stuff. Okay, so I want you to retake the survey right now. Then we're going to look at the survey for the last 10 minutes of class and talk about any items that you're like, I don't know that one uh, as a class. the stink in my closet finally it was an old loaf of bread that fallen behind my microwave that was all completely it was the nastiest thing I've ever seen but the smell is gone from my closet so yay me actually I didn't find it Mr. Anderson did okay can you list the things that make a base oh I don't have our class pulled up that's last few years there we go okay so everybody can list the, the basic components that make a PC work can you list the PC input out input out uh, I don't have my class pulled up. How can that say out of 11 and 4 and out of 15 when there's only a few of us? How is that possible? Hmm. Something wrong there. Group. Groups, 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 groups. That doesn't make any sense. Groups. Back 
to that. shouldn't see old people. I don't want to see old people analysis. Why is it doing that? I should not see 17 answers. That is weird. Why is it showing? Yeah. Poop. I actually got more when I did that. I wonder if it's Showing, uh, it is. It doesn't overwrite like it used to. Uh, no. Can I delete responses? Okay, I'm deleting these old ones. Hoping those are the old ones. Today is not Thursday, so we'll go. This is painful. One, two, three, four, five. I just need to delete all of them except the last five. It used to, the old feedback one used to just overwrite um, the previous response. The module has changed. I wonder if there's something I have to set differently. I'm going to have to look at that. Because obviously it's no good if I see every answer because then it takes your previous nose. Oh my gosh. more time doing this then. Hmm. Core names, auto number questions, show analysis. Submissions. Maybe that's what should have been no. Hmm. Okay, well, I'm just going to go through them and, and let you guys tell me. Even though that's not the intent of the way I have this set up, because I don't want you to have to tell me and raise your hand. Does anybody feel like they can't listen to input, input output devices? The whole point of this is because I don't want to say you don't know know this. Explain the difference between hardware and software. Hopefully everybody can do that. If you can't, please come and see me because only one person ever said they couldn't. I uh, can explain what CPU stand for and its basic function. I'm just going to go by if only one said they can't. Can you explain the basic function of the motherboard? We went over that again today. Connects everything up, houses the CPU, and allows everything to talk to the CPU. Primary storage, we went over that again today, so I'm going to assume those are old and those are old. Can you explain what expansion cards are for to expand the capability of the, the motherboard itself? Everybody says they understand what power does. Know the basic parts, hopefully you guys can do that. Explain what ROM, BIOS, and I should say BIOS, ROM, BIOS, and CMOS RAM are. Oh, I have that down here. Does anybody have any questions? I'd rather just do questions at this point since we only have a few minutes left anyways. Anybody, anybody have any specific questions that they're like, I didn't really get that? Yeah. Uh, are you going to ask what CMOS is? Yes, but I'm not what the acronym is. Okay. No, 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 I'm not going to, because it doesn't matter. Something metal oxide, whatever, I don't even know. I'll just tell my head. You just need to know that the, the configuration is stored in CMOS RAM. It's on your reading. I always forget that one for some, for some reason. So no, I'm not going to ask. that. That's one acronym yeah, I will never ask you because for some reason it doesn't stick in my head. And you're like, really? You can't remember that? No, I can't. It always goes away. Anybody got any other question? Okay, the, the test is obviously going to be on Moodle. Uh, so when you guys come in, the one thing you can't do is sit next to each other. Okay? You can sit across from each other but not next to each other. So some people are going to have to sit over here. Some people are going to sit over there. We'll spread out during tests. Okay? So if I have a thing up that says, Test seating, I'm just saying you guys can't sit right there. Okay, that's the one day that you're allowed to sit over here though, because you'll see a chair like right now, which shouldn't be there, but I'll have, have a chair over here, meaning that you can sit there and here and there, there and over here, so that you guys are spread out a little bit. That question is just like everything else, are randomized. The questions are randomized, the answers are randomized. 
I don't answer questions during tests. So if you raise your hand and I come over and you say, and you start talking about the question, I don't want you to talk about the question because when you talk about the question, you may be answering the question for someone else. Did you really mean to say this? Okay. Because most of the time these have been vetted multiple times. I don't know if there will be any new questions this year at all, um, although I'm going to play with some of the question types that there might be a couple of new questions. Uh, but you can certainly raise your hand and when I come over point at the question, I'll read through it again. And if ever an image doesn't show up, that's I, I think there's supposed to be a picture here. It's not showing up, and I'll come over and go, you are correct, sir. Because the thing will say, what is what on this picture? And you're like, there's no picture. Hopefully that doesn't happen either. Okay, but it's the first test I've given on the new Moodle system, so some can happen. Okay. If you have any questions, obviously you're free. Feel free to come in during intervention. Today, tomorrow, I'm always here after school as well. Okay? Yeah? I mean, uh, any questions coming around? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. And, and I, I can come in.